In this video, what we are going to discuss is Rule 68 and that is your foreclosure of real estate mortgage. There are two kinds of foreclosure of real estate mortgage. Number one is your judicial foreclosure and the other one is the extrajudicial foreclosure. And ang pag-uusapan natin dito sa video ngayon is the judicial foreclosure. And what is the applicable law when we talk about judicial foreclosure of real estate mortgage? That is the rules of court, particularly Rule 68. But before we go to the procedure, Let's recall mo na what is stated in your civil code. Recall that your real estate mortgage is an accessory contract. It is an accessory contract executed by a debtor in favor of a creditor as security for the principal obligation. So since it is only an, an accessory contract, what is therefore the principal contract? The principal contract is the simple loan or mutubum, nangutang ka sa tao, yung tao gustong manigurado na maibabalik mo yung pera. Therefore, you execute a uh, real estate mortgage. That is the security. And if you're going to file a foreclosure of real estate mortgage, what does it mean? It means that you debtor, you failed to pay your utang despite demand. And since hindi ka nakabayad ng utang mo, si creditor has two alternative remedies. What is his remedy? First is to file an action for collection of a sum of money that is a personal action. And the other remedy is to foreclose the mortgage that is a real action. The creditor has two alternative remedies and that is to file a personal action or a real action. But kahit meron siyang dalawang alternative remedies, take note that in reality, si creditor has only one cause of action. He has only a single cause of action in case hindi makabayad si debtor. And what is that cause of action? To recover the debt. Bakit meron lang isang cause of action? Because if you're going to look at the remedy, even if it is dalawa, even if dalawa ang kanyang uh, remedy, that is to file a personal action or to file a real, a real action, take note that they arise from the same cause. And what cause is that? the cause of the debtor that he was not able to pay therefore you creditor can recover the debt and for that reason that constitute a single cause of action again ha there is only a single cause of action and that is the recovery of the debt therefore you creditor if you are going to file a personal action or an action for a collection of sum of money and then later on you are going to file an action an action to foreclose the mortgage that is not allowed that is very clear under rule 2 section 3 you cannot institute more than one suit for a single cause of action and if you are going to institute two or more suits on the basis of one cause of action, the filing of one or a judgment upon the merits in any one is available as a ground for the dismissal of the others. 1999 bar exam question A purchased a lot from B for 1.5 million. A gave a down payment of, of 500,000. He signed a promissory note that is payable 30 days after date and as a security for the settlement of the obligation, he mortgaged the same lot to B. The note fell due and A failed to pay. Therefore, B commenced an action, an action to recover, to recover from A the balance of 1 million pesos. After securing a favorable judgment on his claim, B brought another action, this time an action to foreclose the mortgage. A therefore filed a motion to dismiss the second action on the ground of bar by prior judgment. Rule on the motion 
the motion to dismiss should be granted. Again, what did we say? Ano ang hindi ginawa ni A? A was not able to pay the remaining balance. Therefore, B has only one cause of action or B has only a single cause of action. And his cause of action is to recover the remaining balance. But in order to recover that remaining balance, there are two ways or two options of doing that. First is to file a real action that is an action to foreclose the mortgage or to file a personal action that is an action to recover the remaining balance. And ano ulit ang sinabi natin? Well, you have two options or you have two ways of recovering that remaining balance. Actually, they arise only from the same cause. And what cause is that? The cause that a was not able to pay the remaining balance. And for that reason, that constitute only a single cause of action. And since you have only one cause of action, ipasok mo ngayon si Rule 2. Rule 2, Section 3 and Section 4 is very clear that for one cause of action, you can file only one civil case. And if you are going to split that cause of action, what is the effect that is very clear according to your Rule 2, Section 4? We'll go now to the procedure. The procedure laid down in Rule 68. You start by filing a complaint. After that, there will be a trial and after trial, there will be a judgment. If you're not happy with the judgment, what is your next step? You can file an appeal or other post-judgment remedies. And the usual course is go to the Court of Appeals and then you go to the Supreme Court via Rule 45 Question of Law. But balikan natin si judgment. According to your Rule 68, the judgment should contain a period. That period is 90 to 120 days. Take note ha, that when the law states that that judgment should indicate a period that is a substantial requirement. And how do you call that period? That is your equity of redemption. That is the equity of redemption. And if there is now a lapse of that 120-day period and still the defendant was not able to pay, then what is your remedy, plaintiff? You file a motion for the sale of the mortgaged property. Ang ibang lawyers, ang tawag nila is motion for execution. Parehas lang yon. Motion for execution or motion for the sale of the mortgaged property. Take note also that after the lapse of that uh, period, you, also, you plaintiff also have that option to file a motion for the issuance of a writ of possession when allowed by law. After you file that motion for execution or motion for the sale of the mortgage property, then there will be a foreclosure sale. Magkakaroon ng foreclosure sale and after that, you plaintiff have again to file a motion, a motion for the confirmation of the sale. And after the motion for the confirmation of the sale is filed, the judge should issue an order, an order confirming the foreclosure sale. Take note that that order is a final order, therefore your remedy is appeal. But after the sale or after the foreclosure sale is confirmed, ano ngayon ang mga options available to the plaintiff and to the defendant? The plaintiff can file an annulment of the mortgage or annulment of the foreclosure sale. How about the defendant rather? The defendant can file an annulment of the mortgage or annulment of the foreclosure sale. How about plaintiff? If there is now an order confirming the foreclosure sale and that period in appealing already lapsed, plaintiff has that option 
the option is to file also a motion for the issuance of a writ of possession. Also, plaintiff can register the sale. He can now register the property under his name. Ano pa ang mga pwedeng mangyari? If you're going to apply now the proceeds of that sale and if kulang hindi nagmatch dun sa utang ni defendant, you plaintiff can file a motion, a motion for deficiency judgment. And since that is a judgment, what is your remedy? You can file also an appeal. So that is the real picture of Rule 68.